Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome back to another Sims 4 speedrunning video or welcome to the channel if you are new here. So in today's video, I'm going to be building in the world of Tartosa, which is the world that we got from the game pack, The Sims 4 My Wedding Stories. And I'm going to be building a rather big <laughs> Italian family home. So this house ends up having four bedrooms and two and a half bathrooms and it's built on a 50 by 40 lot. The half bathroom is because there's like a utility room, laundry room downstairs and it's also got like a toilet and a sink in but it's not a fully fleshed out bathroom but there is another two in this house as well. But this week I just wanted to sit down and build something in the world of Tartosa. I feel like it's been some time since I last built here and I wanted to build something in kind of like a a Mediterranean kind of style. I wasn't so set on what type of Mediterranean style and I was going to build in the world of Oasis Springs but I then came across this picture that I found on Pinterest. I will find the picture and I'll pop it up on the screen now and I just instantly fell in love with this like Tuscan villa. It's just it's absolutely beautiful and so I basically tried to recreate it and this is how it turned out and I'm really happy and really proud of the way this house turned out as well. I think this is probably one of my best lots that I've probably ever done so yeah I'm really super proud of it so I hope you like it but getting on and talking a little bit more about the build itself so as well as the four bedrooms and two and a half bathrooms this lot also has of course like a kitchen a dining room space a lounge space you know all of the kind of like standard stereotypical things that you normally would find in a family house but it also has a home office slash kind of like little music room there is also a wine cellar in this house as well and then there is also like a garage the main I I want to say like the the main bulk of the build like the biggest part of the build is probably the back garden because you can see the way that I built this house I technically built it so it's got four levels but you know normally when you build a house in the game the first level is technically the basement it's just the way that I built it because going back to it, the picture that I found on Pinterest I really like the fact that on the the bottom left hand side there was kind of like this little bump out kind of coming out of the foundation of the house and I wanted to kind of implement that into this build but the way that I wanted to do it with using like the normal standard room tool instead of the basement tool it then gave the lot so much basement space and so much like upper upper decking space you know like the bit where your sims have the swimming pool where they have sun lounges because the bottom part of the build was so big there ends up being so much in this back garden. So the back garden itself, first of all, we have an absolutely massive swimming pool. We also have two little separate sun lounging areas. We also have one thing which I'm just so happy the way it turned out. It's in the back left hand corner and it's kind of like a little a little covered over area and I put a fireplace in there and there's also a chimney coming out the roof so that, like all this smoke comes out and I was thinking it could be like the nicest little barbecue area there is a really long table in there there is also loads of different like candles and plants and like ivy it's just it is so beautiful and that area is probably one of my favorite areas of the build but then saying that I'm actually in a bit of a predicament right now when this video goes up you'll know because you would have seen the thumbnail but I am so stuck what like what part of this build to make the thumbnail for this video because I basically was looking at this picture when I was building this house yeah I found this picture on Pinterest fed enough of it I wanted to try and recreate it in the game but I ran into a little bit of an issue and the issue was I could not for the life of me find the front of of the picture that I was looking at now normally if I ever run into this kind of I say issue it's not really an issue is it but if I ever run into this this bit of an error where I want to try and recreate something that I've seen in a picture or in real life and I want to pop it on into the game if I want to try and recreate it as accurate as possible oftentimes I'm going to want to see the front of the build but the thing is I could not find it because normally whenever I run into this issue I will just save the picture that I'm looking at and then you know like google image search or like google lens search where you can look a picture up and you can like see where else it's posted on the internet I did that for this build and I was already confused for a while because funny enough the name of the original real life build that I was trying to recreate just so happens to be the name of also the most expensive private home in Europe and they've got the exact same name so when I was trying to find it all I was getting was this absolutely massive mansion in France looks completely different still beautiful like both of them are absolutely beautiful buildings but I could not for the life of me find the actual original like Italian villa that I was basing this build off. Honestly, it must have taken me about half an hour and I eventually found a side view of the villa. So by the way, if you're curious of what the this original villa's called, I think it's pronounced Villa Leopolda. 
I did just have to look up pronunciation for that, and I probably got it wrong, so I'm really sorry if I, if I pronounced that incorrectly, but that is what the, the original Tuscan villa that I was inspired by is called. Also, apparently, the most expensive private home in Europe, and it's meant to be, like, one of the biggest homes in the whole entire world as well. I just thought, it's, like, literally my luck. I really want to find this one particular house, and I just couldn't find it. But, yeah, I found a side view eventually, but the side view... The lot that I'm building on, which is 40 by 50, like I already mentioned, it just wasn't big enough. And so do you know what? I thought, I'm just going to wing it. And so I ended up completely winging the front portion of this build. And this is where my predicament comes in, because now I'm so stuck what angle I prefer, because I made the back, the back garden and the front garden. They look quite different from one another, but the front garden itself, I'm just so in love with all the different like cliffs and all the different kind of like curved fencing and all the different trees and bushes and just the way it came together. Right now it looks a bit shaky, don't worry, I'll do sort it out. But the way it came together, I'm just, I'm really happy with. So I'm on a bit of a predicament because I don't know which, which angle to choose for the thumbnail. But yeah, like I said, by the time this video goes up, of course I would have uploaded the thumbnail. And so you would have known, but yeah, there was so many lovely screenshots for this build and i i'm gonna have quite a, a difficult time trying to choose which one to go for but also the screenshots by the way there's like five minutes worth of screenshots for this video but i promise you the screenshots are 100 percent worth it i was just so in love with every single centimeter of this whole entire build and so i had the absolute time of my life just going around and just taking pictures of it there is just something that's so so pretty about building in the world of tartosa i think it's because there are so many beautiful trees it sounds strange but there are so many different beautiful trees that come up with the wedding stories game pack in the live edit menu and so whenever i can use them and use them in a build which normally i can only really use these kind of like landscaping items in the world of tartosa and so whenever i do build in this world i do really go to town with the landscaping as as you will see because both the back garden and the front garden are very heavily landscaped but I mean, it was really fun, and I think it looks really nice, and hopefully you think it looks nice as well, but anyway, moving on from that, and actually getting back and talking about the build, so you can see I've already built, like, the main, the main bulk of the house, pretty much, I'm just going around now, and placing down like, loads of different ivy, I also end up adding, I don't know if I show all the footage of it, but loads of different little cracks and little, like, chips onto the wall, because with the Vampire's Game Pack, and I think some other packs as well since then, but basically, we've got these wall decals that are under the painting category and you can put them on walls and it looks like okay maybe this bit of the wall has been pushed over pushed over <laughs> pushed like pushed on a bit too much or maybe it's been like scratched or there's like holes in the walls and cracks and just you know like little little details like that i do go around the house both on the inside and the outside and add a ton of them not too much just to make it look you know like nicely blended in but i liked the idea of having all these different cracks to show how old this house could possibly be maybe it's been maybe it's like hundreds of years old this i was about to say this little villa it is not little whatsoever but this house in tartosa maybe it was built like 200 years ago or something like that and over time things decay things fall down people scratch walls people you know might accidentally put a hole in the wall somehow i don't know how you do that but maybe they pushed a wheelbarrow into one <laughs> I don't know why I said wheelbarrow, but maybe something went into a ball and it's just cracked and just, it deteriorates over time. And so, you know, I do add in loads of different little cracks and scratches and just try and make it feel as authentic as I can possible. But as well as all the ivy that I added, also added a ton of wisteria onto the exterior of the build. Now, the wisteria itself, I think the one that I ended up going for was the version that we got from the My Wedding Stories live edit menu. And also, if you're curious, the ivy that I've used, the, you know, like the really tall detail pieces, they are from Discover University in the live edit menu. I feel like I need to mention that because if ever I place it down onto a build and I forget in that voiceover, someone always asks me. And so, yeah, if you're curious where all of that really beautiful ivy that looks a little bit more realistic than some of the, the other ones that we have in the game, it's from Discover University in the live edit menu. But the wisteria that I added onto the build, I was thinking that this building could potentially used to have been like a, a vineyard or something and no grapes wine wisteria kind of looks like grapes and so i did a ton of that also onto the building as well i feel like i do need to mention this because i was going through a little bit of a a process when it came around to actually deciding that this was going to be a house because funny enough when i originally came in and i was starting to build this house 
I originally was going to make it into a wedding venue <laughs> because hear me out. I basically realised that I've never built a wedding venue in the game. Even before the My Wedding Stories game pack came out, you obviously still had weddings. You normally go to somewhere unless you want to have like a, a little private ceremony with like your sim and their partner. But normally you get your sims to go somewhere to get married. Somehow I haven't built one yet. And so originally when I came in and I started doing this build, I was like, great, I'll make this into the most beautiful, you know, Tuscan or rustic wedding venue. It'll be beautiful. The screenshots are going to be great. But then I actually started to look around the lot as I was in the process of building it and I was kind of adding all these different bump outs and all these different like upper balcony areas. And I was looking at it and I was thinking, there's not really any amazing places for your sims to actually get married because whenever i play the game myself i'm not gonna lie i'm very picky i'm very particular when it comes around to where my sims are going to get engaged where my sims are going to have their wedding ceremony like i'm very particular and the amount of screenshots that i take because i'm a massive screenshot player i don't know if anyone else is but i take screenshots of absolutely everything my sim would have just got an a at school I take a picture of the notification. What I'm going to do with that notification picture, I don't know. My sim could literally be having a wheel on the toilet. And if I get that little notification come through, I'll just take a screenshot of it. I'm a big screenshot player, yeah? And so when it comes around to doing my builds, I want them to be, you know, player friendly, easy for gameplay. Also want them to look really nice for screenshots and, you know, if you're the same kind of thing. And so when I was building this, I was looking around all the different balcony areas and I was thinking, it's a beautiful view. Like, don't get me wrong, the views of this villa are amazing. They're really pretty. They look onto the sea in the distance. You look onto, like, some mountains. and There's actually mountains behind the lot as well. There's a lot of mountains in the world of Tartosa. But I was looking at the views and I was thinking, okay, they're really pretty. But I feel like they can be better. And then I actually discovered that the neighbour and lot to this one, which I think is a... It's either a 30 by 40 or a 30 by 20. I can't remember which way around it is because they, they are both neighbouring lots, but I can't remember which one it is. But basically, one of the neighbouring lots, this lot, ends up having like a waterfall, like spack bang, like in front of it. And so if you was to build a wedding venue, I feel like that might be a nice place because you've literally got waterfall as your backdrop. And so I thought, you know what? I'm going to make that lot into a wedding venue. And then this one, I'm going to make into a family home. I did debate at one point making this house a little bit smaller and then being able to like shrink it over onto that smaller lot type to then make it so I can make it into a wedding venue. But the only thing is with that, the house itself that I'm building, it has so much terrain manipulation, so many different hills and so much is going on. I didn't want to shrink it just so it then could become a wedding venue. And so I thought, you know what? I'm just going to leave it be. I'm just going to make it into a house. And so... Yeah, that is pretty much what I did, as you can already tell. But yeah, that was the process that I went through when I was building this house, which I thought was quite funny because, yeah, funny enough, originally this was meant to be a wedding venue, but just that plan went out the window. But yeah, also, I feel like I should mention, if you wanted to, your sims can still get married here. All you just got to do is pop an archway down and, and you're good. As long as you've got a wedding arch. Or to be fair, if your sims are just engaged, they can just elope immediately. They don't even have to have the whole like event. They don't need the whole shebang. If your sims just want to like get it over and done with, they can do. But if you want to add a wedding arch and maybe make it into a wedding venue, feel free to do so. Also, I feel like this could be quite a good rental property if your sims want to come on vacation to the world of Tartosa. I decorated it to be quite cluttered up on the inside in terms of it's to the clutter extent <laughs> clutter extent it's to the extent of clutter which i feel like you wouldn't find in a rental but if you're if you want to play like that and you want to have like really cluttered rentals that your sims rent out or maybe it could be like your sims family vacation home or something but anyway besides the point moving on from that and actually getting back to talking about what i'm doing right now and what is on the screen so as you can see i'm just currently going around and just doing some landscaping of the front garden now i've just done the back garden which the back garden landscaping ended up being quite quite structured so you would have seen the way that i did the terrain manipulation i did it so it was quite it was quite on a it was square but i tried to i tried to like blend it out so you can't tell that it was on a square but basically i got these live edit bushes from the base game and i basically tried to make it act like a fence and then with that i cluttered it up with loads of different like like hydrangeas and roses and like all these different like really green bushes and like trees and stuff and i tried to make it feel quite structured in the back garden but then when i moved over into the front garden which you can see i'm doing right now i'm not gonna i didn't have a clue what i was gonna do because originally the way that i did the terrain manipulation for the front portion of the build it was a bit it was just a bit iffy and so i'm not gonna lie i did have to take five minutes i basically i started and i did my first attempt of landscaping this area and it just wasn't going to plan it just was not looking it weren't looking at and so i thought you know what give it five minutes and so i basically just came back to it at a later date and then 
yeah, this is how the front garden landscaping turned out. And I'm just so happy that it, it has symmetry to the back garden, but it, it's also decorated and landscaped, so it's not meant to be like a replica, if you get what I mean. One thing that I did struggle with is the way that I built the house. Now I was talking about technically the basement is the first floor. When I wanted to do the train manipulation, whenever you're trying to put a hill right up to like a, a room that's on the floor, the the terrain kind of like dips down you can't help it it's just something that happens in the game you basically can't have like a like a built-in room into like into a, like a hill or something just the way that the game functions it's just not doable and so when i was coming around doing this little staircase area leading up to the front door i had this really big gap and i was looking at it now and originally i was gonna like just landscape it over and just put loads of bushes and just call it a day and just hope that it looked okay but then i was thinking well why don't i just use a live edit fence and then basically try and make that look like the foundation itself and so yeah you would have seen that is pretty much what i did so you see where the railing is and where the staircase is underneath the railing it's kind of like a, a live edit wall i just shrunk it down i merged it into the terrain itself and you wouldn't even know it just looks like it's meant to be there if you get what i mean it is a really handy trick so if you ever in a situation where you've got like a, a similar thing because i don't know if i explained it well enough by the way with the terrain with the terrain thing basically you cannot do a hill right up to a wall if that makes any sense and so you would have seen that's why i had the gap but if you're ever running into that problem yourself honestly just pop into the live edit menu just pull out any kind of like fence or anything that will kind of cover it and then you can merge it in my sims can walk over it no issues whatsoever also feel like this is a really good time to mention i have playtested this build like all of my builds i've playtested absolutely everything before i start my voiceovers just in case i run into any issues and i can tell you about it i didn't really run into any any major issues the one thing that i did notice and it was a bit weird and i, I don't really know it's not the worst thing in the world i added the pool onto like the upper like decking area for some reasons my sim would not use the pool ladder don't know why because there was enough space there was nothing blocking it but for some reason my sim was just didn't want to use a pool ladder but it's all right because this is the sims 4 and not the sims 2 your sims don't they they don't need a pool ladder to get out of the pool your sims aren't going to drown your sims will be okay with the sims 4 your sims actually climb out of the pool itself whereas in previous sims games they'd have to get the pool ladder that's why there was always this kind of like ongoing joke within the, like, the sims community of if you take away the pool ladder like you're you're done because <laughs> you can't get out but in the sims 4 it's completely different but yeah for some reason the pool ladder that i end up adding i haven't added it yet but the pool ladder in this house both of them for some reason my sim won't work maybe it's because underneath it i actually put a platform because obviously the house itself the actual core of the house where you've got the kitchen the dining room and all you know all your bits and bobs the actual house itself is quite a it's quite a decent size it's not too big it's not too small it's just kind of like a a comfy size if you want to put it that way but then the underneath part which i tried to make look like the foundation which is technically the basement it was so big there was absolutely no way i was going to be able to fully furnish the whole entire thing i furnished like sections of it so that's where the wine cellar is in kind of like a a smaller portion of a downstairs area but not the whole entire thing that would have literally taken me years but there is like smaller portions on the on the downstairs area the rest of it the parts that i didn't decide to furnish and decorate i just decided to put a platform in so i'm thinking maybe that's the reason why the pool ladders aren't working because technically underground next to it there's a platform even though it's, it's the platform isn't in the pool itself i don't know the sims is weird and so sometimes things like that happen but yeah apart from that if you want to download this build off the gallery you're good like there's no there's no problems whatsoever i play tested it with a young adult a teenager a child and a toddler because i didn't mention as well but and to be honest i didn't even need the teenager because a teenager and a young adult can literally do the exact same amount of things but whenever i play test i always like to play test all of my builds thoroughly and so if there is literally like one toddler item you best believe i'm going to quickly go into create sim create a toddler and then get them to test the item in the build but you know i i tested the whole entire thing and and you're absolutely good and also that is how i decided to decorate the rooms by the way i don't think i mentioned it but i decorated the rooms to be one for a set of parents one for a teenager one for a child and then one for a toddler as well unfortunately as i'm currently doing this voiceover we do not have infants in the game but maybe that will be coming next week do you know what i haven't even spoken about this massive update that we're meant to be getting or even this new expansion pack which i don't even know how i've managed to make that happen because since we've got the announcement that we're going to be getting an expansion pack fairly soon and also possibly the toddler update i think we're getting 
two kits, which actually, I don't know if the two kits was the bathroom clutter kit and the underwear kit, I can't remember off the top of my head, but basically, we've had massive things happen in terms of Sims news, I haven't even told you about it, and I don't know how it's happened, because this news is like old news, this, this happened like two weeks ago, and somehow in the past two weeks, even though one video was an hour long voiceover, and the other one was a 45 minute voiceover, completely failed to mention it, but yeah, we've got a really big stream happening I think next week on Monday or Tuesday, I don't know, it's the 31st, whatever date that falls on, but we've got a really big stream happening and I'm really holding out for infants and the update for them. And so, yeah, unfortunately, if you're watching this video before we have infants, this house does not have any infant stuff, but of course you can add, add it in and, you know, change the rooms in any way, shape or form that you want to. Also want to mention, even though I didn't fully furnish or like fully flesh out the basement level, the rest of the house is completely like fully furnished, fully decorated. But if you wanted to, you could unplatform the platform that I put into the basement for the areas that I decided that I didn't want to furnish. And you can add like more bedrooms into the basement, or you could add like possibly a games room, or maybe like a I was about to say a juice making station, but there is, there is actually that in the cellar because the cellar itself ends up having a bar, so your Sims can like make a cocktail or a glass of wine, and there is also a juice fizzing station because i don't know if you ever played the sims 3 world of adventures when your sims go to france your sims used to be able to make wine do you know how much i miss that for some reason we don't have that in sims 4 and i was trying to make it feel like you know like i mentioned this used to be like a a vineyard and so there there must be somewhere where your sims might be able to make a glass or two but where we don't have anything like that in the game the next best thing is the juice making station that we got from the eco lifestyle expansion pack but yeah feel free to change the basement maybe add rooms to it delete rooms off it if you want to make a prison in the basement whatever you do in your gameplay it's completely up to you but the option is there if you want it to be but anyway <laughs> moving on from that and getting back to talking about what i'm actually doing right now so you can see that i'm just currently focusing on this upper balcony area i was about to say porch but it's not really a porch is it have i referred to it as a porch it's like a the elevated back garden space if you want to put it that way i'm just focusing on furnishing this and just kind of like trying to fill it out trying to make it feel like it's a lived in house it's a lived in back garden this sims family they've got all of like their stuff all dotted about in the back garden as well as a swimming pool that ends up being at that barbecue area that I was talking about which I've already furnished so you've already kind of like seen me furnish that area but it's just so just so sweet and just so wholesome because you can get your sims to put the fireplace on and then you can have a sim cooking at the barbecue station and then also put the little oh you know with my wedding stories we've got the the champagne bottles and your sims can give toast I put that by the barbecue area as well and I was thinking if you've got like a really big sims family and maybe you don't want to live here and maybe they want to come here on vacation it'll be such a nice little spot for them to come outside of an evening the sunset's going down like over the beach area your sims have got the fireplace burning someone's cooking like hot dogs or something on the barbecue your sims can have a drink it's just so wholesome that little like covered up area but in the back garden there ends up being a ton of different planters there also ends up being like some sun lounges and then also just some like live edit like plant pots that i found i say live edit they're either from a live edit menu or the debug menu and the ones that i'm talking about are you see i've placed down these plants which some of them are kind of like in this white kind of like porcelain vase and there's got these white flowers coming out of it and there's another one which is a more of a, a circular kind of like terracotta color bars and then it's got these pink flowers coming out of it they are from either the live edit menu or the debug menu i think they also might be from base game but i thought they fitted quite nicely in kind of like the corner spaces of some of the balconies you can see over there where i've placed down them kind of like little them little benches which the benches that i've used by the way are from the romantic garden pack which i never feel like i use anymore i remember when that stuff pack came out which stuff packs rest in peace they're probably not going to ever come back now but i remember when the romantic garden stuff pack came out i was so obsessed with always just using all the different landscaping items all the different like garden furniture decorations in my builds and i feel like ever since we've had the live edit menu I never go towards them flowers from that stuff pack anymore. I also really hope that we're going get, to be getting some stuff packs this year because it, it's not looking promising, is it? But either way, moving on from that. As you can see, I've now moved on into the inside of the house. And like always, I started off with the entrance hall. Now, you would have seen me do the floor plan for this house. I don't show you the floor plan for like the downstairs cellar area and like the garage space just because... 
half of it was my game just kind of like freaking out because I was trying to raise up such a wide area of just platform and if you're a builder you might be familiar but sometimes when you try and add platforms into the game it can be very slow like it literally will take about five minutes to get a platform from the smallest height to the largest height I don't know what it is but when you press that little arrow it is just consistent click and then it takes ages and then you have to click it again and it takes ages and so i decided to cut out the like the cellar basement floor plan but like always there'll be an overhead of it at the end of the video as well as like the rest of the floor plans for the rest of the house but you would have seen me initially come in and do the floor plan for this house i did decide to change it ever so slightly when i came in and i did the wallpapering and the floor in it just because i was looking at it and it just it didn't seem right, if that makes any sense. Like the downstairs stays the exact same, it's just the upstairs level. You might have noticed when I was doing the floor plan, it ends up being this room on the left hand side and originally it was gonna have, it was just a weird shape and, and the staircase was coming out and so I feel like if your Sims was to walk up the stairs to get to the next level, like the, the final top floor of the build, the staircase was right in front of them and I was looking at it and I was thinking, your Sims might walk upstairs and I mean they won't but I like to think that they could potentially trip <laughs> I'd, not like I want your sims to trip over but I like realism in my game and so realistically looking at it I was thinking looks like a fire hazard or looks like some sort of hazard not fire hazard it looks like some sort of hazard so I decided to change the floor plans pretty much what I'm trying to say but ever so slightly so much that I don't even think it looks that different it was just a little bit of a rework of some of the rooms on one side of the house but Anyway, as you can see, I just did a little hallway entrance area into the build and now I've pretty much moved straight over into the lounge room. Now you might notice something that I placed down into this build, which I'm so excited about still. Because if you weren't aware, last week we got the bathroom clutter kit and within this bathroom clutter kit, obviously we've got loads of different like bathroom decor like items. We also got light switches. So now you best believe every single build that I'm going to try and do going forward, I'm going to try and make it so there is going to be light switches and also plug sockets in the build. Although I do feel like I need to explain the plug socket situation because we got the light switches in the clutter kit. We got two versions of them. One's meant to be a bit of a dimmer, which the dimmer itself and the light switch, maybe it's a UK thing, but I've never seen a dimmer like it. Normally the dimmers that we have in the UK are more like little balls and they kind of like twist, whereas... The one that we got within this kit, which it looks very American, the light switches, but it's quite, it's, it's just a weird shape to me, anyway. But the plug sockets themselves, they don't come in the kit, they're actually on the back of a wall light. I explained this last week, but just in case you missed last week's video, because it, it was my first build using the light switches and the plug sockets, and I went to town with it, I had the time of my life. But I explained this last week, but just in case you didn't see that video, basically the wall light that this plug socket's on, it's from the Parenthood Game Pack, We've had it in the game for literally years and for some reason, I don't know why this happened, but the wall light itself, if you actually flip it 180 degrees, on the back of it, the the, the area that you don't even see in, in gameplay, for some reason there's a plug socket there. Like you can see that I'm doing it over here, so it's this little night light. Normally you put it into kids rooms or like toddlers rooms and then like the scary monster under the bed, that doesn't happen. Normally you place it down and you're fine. But if you actually flip it 180 degrees, for some reason, on an area that we won't even see when we're in live live mode, however you want to say it, there is a plug socket there. And so I'm now taking advantage of this little hidden detail within this wall light and basically rotating it so it's 180 degrees so you can actually see the socket itself, sizing it up and putting it pretty much everywhere in all of my builds going forward. I did do it in the entrance hallway as well as I think the lounge living room, whatever area you want to class that as, and I think maybe even potentially the kitchen space over here maybe, but I knew that I didn't want to record every single time that I did it because it is quite time consuming because you literally have to place down the object and then you have to rotate it and then I like to size it up ever so slightly just so it's a little bit more true to what I imagine to be like a plug socket size and then it's just it's a bit of a faff and so I show like some areas of me doing it in the build but unlike last week I did decide to cut out the rest of it and so just know that plug sockets and light switches are in every single room of this house but you might not see them just because I didn't want to make this video any longer than what it needed to be I mean it's all really like a, a 55 minute 56 minute long video and so if I can cut out like a minute of me pretty much doing the same thing, I'm going to do that. But anyway, as you can see, I just finished up that lounge living room area and now I've moved on into the kitchen. Quickly, I do just want to mention something that I placed down into the lounge, which you might be wondering where it's from because I rarely ever use it. I think in total, I might have used this decoration maybe like 
two times like in the whole time that i've been doing building on youtube but it is this kind of like skull detail we got it from the journey to batu would you believe it we got it from the star wars pack now i originally placed it down as that wall just to try and fill out the space next to the fireplace and i placed it down because it was the right size like it was just kind of like the right size the right shape just to kind of like fill in that little empty area and at first i placed it down and i was like is that just a bit weird like it's literally like a skull on the wall like it doesn't really fit and then I was debating it and I thought, you know what, I'm going to leave it and I'm going to I'm gonna ask you what you think about it because I thought it looked quite, quite fitting. Like maybe this is an old house. Maybe sometimes when you look at interiors of older houses or like fancy mansions, they do have things like that on the wall. And so I thought, well, it kind of fits in with the build. And so I decided to keep that skull in. But yeah, if you was looking at it and you was wondering, I've never seen this before. It is from... The Journey to Batu, the Star Wars pack, and I think it might even be in the debug menu of memory. To be honest, I don't really ever search through the Journey to Batu game pack, and to be completely honest, I often try and avoid using items from that pack because I know it's not exactly the most favourite, to say the least, pack of the Sims franchise. I know a lot of people I'm not a fan of the pack and to be honest I really wasn't a fan of the pack I'm still not a fan of the pack I literally I went to Batu. I went to Batu once I ain't got a clue what's going on I'm I'm not a Star Wars fan I've, I've never been someone that loves the franchise if you love the franchise I'm really happy there's a game pack out there that is suited to it but I I played with Batu once I, it's so hard to say I played with Journey to Batu, the Star Wars pack I played it once I had no idea what was going on exited the game and so I know it's not a fan favourite, it's not my particular favourite in the game as well, but sometimes there is some good items here and there, and so sometimes I do dabble in the build and buy menu, but anyway, also in the lounge room I end up using the sofas that were from the Desert Lux kit, and then the fireplace was from the Cottage Living Expansion Pack, but now you can see that I've moved over, and I've started off by furnishing the kitchen, and also kind of like this little this smaller dining room space now the kitchen itself ends up being quite small i think for a house of this size because to me if i was to walk through like the rows of tartals and i was to walk past this house i would look at it and think they've probably got an absolutely massive kitchen probably got like three ovens and a, a bunch of different fridges because from the exterior it looks absolutely massive but on the inside the kitchen actually ends up being quite a a regular size kitchen i decided to use the the counters from, I think, the cottage of an expansion pack, as well as the fridge, and then the oven itself is from the country kitchen kit. You might notice as well that I did decide to build the kitchen on a little bit of a slight platform, only like one bump or like one click up. But the thing is, where the kitchen was laid out, it was part hallway, part dining room, breakfast space, and then part kitchen, and it was such a long room. And I was looking at it and I was thinking, okay, well, if I have the kitchen, but it does, it's not going to feel like an actual kitchen because it's just going to feel like a kitchen in a hallway, if that makes any sense. And so to make it feel like a little bit more of a an actual kitchen, it's not just been plonked in the hallway, I thought if I put it onto a platform and then also change like the floor into be a tile, it kind of helps make it feel a little bit more separated, even though it's not separated, if you get what I mean. But also in that kind of like hallway dining kitchen room space, it ends up being a small little breakfast nook, which you might notice I actually use a sofa on one side of the table to make it look like your sims can get round there and you know they can eat at the table unfortunately the sofa that i actually placed down all them pillows onto it i knew that it wouldn't work but just to let you know it doesn't work the the chairs around the table they work absolutely fine so your sims can still sit at the table and they can still have like their oatmeal in the morning or like their cereal or whatever they're having for breakfast they can still sit at the breakfast table they just unfortunately can't sit on the side where there's a sofa one reason being I placed down at the table way too close to the actual sofa itself so it doesn't even look like your sims could get in. I feel like it would be one of them situations where if someone wants to sit there and they want to sit at the back, you probably have to pull the table out a little bit. And then also where it's technically a sofa, your sims won't sit at the table when they're at the sofa and like eat their meal how they should at a dining room table. Does that make sense? Because for some reason, even if you place down like a sofa and it's the correct distance away from a table if your sim wants to sit down and eat a meal on that sofa they'll just hold the plate in their hand really awkwardly and they just won't place it down to the table it makes absolutely no sense but yeah I, I knew that it wouldn't work it was just purely like a decorative thing but I decided to actually clutter it up with some of these cushions that we got from the high school years expansion pack and they're in the debug menu pretty much ever since we've had the introduction of this pack I feel like every single armchair every single 
lonely dining room chill anything that looks like it, it could be a little bit more comfortable my go-to now is the debug menu the high school use expansion perk and then just find this pillow rotate it and plop it on and it just it looks a little bit more lived in it looks like that area is a little bit more comfortable and the sofa that i actually placed down on the opposite side of like that breakfast nook table it's from the cats and dogs expansion pack it's just kind of like a little a little wooden bench almost so far kind of like combination it doesn't look particularly comfy like i feel like if i was to sit on that for like more than an hour or something like my, my back would hurt and so i thought i'm gonna place down some little some little pillows to make it feel a little bit more just lifting just looks a little bit more comfortable but now as you can see i've moved over into the next space which is the official dining room so this one is a little bit more fancy don't worry your sim can sit at every single seat at this table and yes i play tested every single one of them because when i say i play test my bills thoroughly I, I honestly I get my sim to sit at every single seat go to every single side of the bed test every single sink even though that sometimes is a massive pain because there is currently a bug in the game where if you get your sim to go to the toilet and then they automatically wash their hands there will literally be a sink like next to the toilet that I've built well I didn't build the toilet but like the, in the room that I've built and my sim will go to the toilet go all the way downstairs use the kitchen sink if you ever run into that problem with any of my bills please be assured that it's not my build it's just the sims 4 I don't know what it is but when that happens I still play test all of the sinks in like the the respected rooms if you get what I mean but now as you can see I just moved over into this kind of like little music room study space so I knew that I wanted there to be like a separate dining room in this house a separate lounge space I then was kind of left with this quite good sized room well I was debating at one point to make it into a bedroom but then I was thinking I don't really want a bedroom to be right next door to a pool because the the windows in this room pretty much look directly out onto the pool you might be able to see it as I'm spinning around this room and so I thought okay well I'm just gonna make it into kind of like a nice little study nook area maybe a bit of a music room I'm only saying music room because it does end up having this grand piano in here which I was debating at one point to put on the other side of the room because I liked the way that the the lighting was coming through onto the windows and then I thought I'm only placing it there because at this exact moment in time the lighting is nice and then I decided to place it on the other side of the room. And then the placement that was originally going to end up placing the piano, I ended up placing down this desk, which I debated on this desk for so long. I couldn't figure out which one I wanted to use. I really wanted to use that really small one that I initially pulled out, which if you're curious, that is from the Paranormal Stuff Pack. But it doesn't come in like a like any kind of like brown swatch. I think we've got it in you know, crazy colours like red and blue and maybe even like orange and just you know them very like drastic colours that for some reason a lot of items in the game have. It comes in loads of them very vibrant colours. We only have one, no we have two plain swatches. I think we have a grey one and then also a black one and I was debating using the black one for a while but then it just didn't really it didn't really work and so I ended up using it this desk which is from the cats and dogs expansion pack and over on it I decided to place down a little typewriter I say typewriter please take that very loosely because it's not actually a typewriter it's just a normal computer in the game but it looks like a typewriter we got it from the cottage Ibn expansion pack and I only really ever place them down into like offices which I imagine like a writer is like working in or living in and so I thought well I know there's going to be like a separate computer space upstairs in the hallway because the way that I came back in and redid the floor plan for the upstairs level they ended up being kind of like a a bit of an office nook so I was like okay well I know there's going to be a computer also on the upstairs level what do I do like over here and then I thought well, why not have like a fully like fully fleshed out computer on the upstairs level and then make it look like there's a typewriter downstairs so it can kind of be like a a music room and then also maybe like a, a book writing room. But then thinking about that, it's actually probably the worst combination I could have done. Because imagine if you're trying to sit down and write a book and someone's next to you like being Elton John on the piano or something. Like, you're literally not going to get any work done. Like how are you going to be able to focus? But the idea was just have like two separate looking items, even though the, the typewriter itself, it's got the exact same gameplay as a computer. I just thought it was like a nice little nice little thing to add in but now as you can see I've now moved on to the upstairs and I started off by furnishing one of the bathrooms. Now I don't know if it's the fact of I'm decorating quite a rustic Tuscan bathroom or it's just the idea that I've just got now this new bathroom clutter kit in my game and we've got all these new shiny items but these bathrooms in this house were so fun to decorate. I always find whenever I decorate bathrooms in kind of like this Mediterranean style they seem to be my favourite to do. I don't, know, I don't know if anyone else finds this but I just feel like you can make them feel a little bit more just cozy and a little bit more just nicer that sounds like a really bad description isn't it but I just feel like with these kind of bathrooms in this kind of Mediterranean style 
with the exposed brick wall and kind of like the really like terracotta floor tiles and then you've got like this grand bath and you've got like white curtains and just loads of greenery i just love it they're like just my favorite types of bathrooms to do now like always in this house like all of my houses i only ever show the furnishing of one bathroom you did see the bathroom downstairs but that's kind of like a half bathroom half utility room it doesn't really count and so normally if ever i have utility rooms i always like to keep the footage in but in the bathroom itself i decided to use the bathtub which is from the cottage of an expansion pack as well as the matching sink it looks like they're kind of like part of a set and then there is also a shower which the shower itself i tried to merge in with a ball because it's got this kind of like glass and also like one wall of tile in the white swatch which i'm not a massive fan of like the white shower version that i've used for some reason on one section of the shower is like a bright orange tile not my cup of tea and so basically i merged it into the wall basically disguised it it works like you can't really tell and then there is also yeah a toilet in there as well but something that i did in the actual bathroom itself on the actual bath is i did this little trick that i always like to do whenever i want to make like a a bit of a cozy romantic bathroom and it's i tried to create kind of like a, a little romantic bath shelf i say romantic i mean like romancing self-care you know like sometimes when you want to have like a bubble bath you want to put on like your fanciest pajamas after like your really comfy ones and maybe you'll like listen to a podcast in, in the bath or maybe you have like a cup of wine or a cup of cup of wine a glass of wine or a cup of tea or you know when you just try and romanticize a bath basically it's what i try to do in that bathroom and so i basically did this trick where i built a wall literally going through the bathtub and then i just got this plain base game shelf plopped it onto the wall and i got it to the correct placement of where i feel like it would be correctly balanced if it was to be there in real life and then i deleted the wall the shelf then stays and then i just basically cluttered it up with i think a book a candle which the candle we actually got from the new clutter kit and then i think maybe like a glass or like a mug or something i can't remember off memory but i tried to romanticize basically your sims when they want to have a bath but then also i feel like i forgot to mention the shower you know i was talking about that white shower if you're curious to where that one is from it's from the seasons expansion pack but yeah, I just went around that bathroom, added in kind of like a little shelfing unit, which is actually just a side table from, I think, the Nifty Knitting or Laundry Day Stuff Pack. And then I basically crushed it up with like these little trays that look like they've got like bath salts on them. Also some like towels with like bars of soap and just tried to make it feel like just bits and bobs basically in the bathroom. But now, as you can see, I've now moved on. I started furnishing the first bedroom in this house, which just so happens to be the toddler's room. Do you know what? I really doubt it, but I really hope with this new toddler update that we're going to be getting, I really hope they give us some more toddler items because I feel like in terms of toddler stuff, in terms of like toddler beds and decorations and just furniture, we are really lacking because I think we've got... Well, I know we've got the bed that I've used in this room, which is from Eco Lifestyle. We've also got a toddler bed from Werewolves, which, you know, at the start of this room, I was kind of like debating which bed to use. The one that I was debating between, that one is from the Werewolves game pack. And then I think we've got two or possibly even three from base game. We've got five beds in total, unless I'm missing one for a life stage in the sims 4 we are really severely lacking so i really hope with this infant update which i'm crossing my fingers i'm really hoping it's going to be next week and we're going to finally be able to play with infants in our game and finally have a little bit more of a an updated i say updated life state they're not actually changing object babies as such they're keeping object baby very much to be just a just something that sits in the corner basically but in terms of the life stages in the sims 4 we're finally getting one that i feel like we've needed for literally years at this point i really hope when we get this update that maybe they just give us like a a toddler bed or two maybe just like swing us an extra bed for a toddler or something because i feel like whenever it comes around to me decorating toddlers rooms i feel like in terms of the furniture that i use I feel like I just use the same stuff in maybe like different swatches because we are so limited in the things that we can use. I don't know, maybe that's just me. Maybe I need to update my, um, I say update, up up my game for like toddler's rooms because I, don't know, I just feel like I'm always just using the same, the same items on rotation because we don't really have too much for toddlers in the game, which is surprising because we quite literally have a stuff pack for toddlers it's called the toddler stuff pack <laughs> and we i still personally feel like we're lacking but either way in that room i end up adding it the bed from eco lifestyle which i think i mentioned as well as like a little side table it looks like it's got like little baskets and stuff in the bottom of it and so i was thinking maybe that's like the toddler's blankets or maybe like spare diapers or like 
their pyjamas or something in there. And there is also an armchair as well next to the bed. I always like to place armchairs next to toddler beds because Sims can read toddlers to sleep, which I feel like most people know that, but it's something that I always like to do in my own personal gameplay. And so whenever I do my builds, I always like there to be an armchair. So if you're like me and you like that option, there is an option there for you. And there is also kind of like a little changing table in that room. I've done this so many times now, but basically where we still don't have a changing table in the game, I'm saying still because I'm really hoping that next week, if it, I'm saying next week, it might not even come out next week, but the next time we get this big, I say the next time, the next update that we're getting, I hope it's a big one. I hope it's the infant update. And I'm hoping that with this infant update, it's going to introduce like changing tables, play pens and them kind of things and I'm hoping that they're going to tweak it so then it's going to be things that toddlers can use as well as infants so like a changing table we might get with the introduction of infants but then maybe they get it so you know when you change a toddler's diaper in game your sims will literally just change you like go a bit blurry they literally throw the diaper in the air they don't even go to the effort to put it in the bin they just fling it into thin air and then it's just gone I really hope with the infant update they change that and they re then we get a changing table but for the time being and something that i've been doing it for like a year or two now is basically trying to make my own changing table using a chest of drawers and then this little like ottoman piece it's really simple to do it doesn't really require any mods i mean you can use mods if you want to to try and get it be completely accurate but basically you just place down a chest of drawers any one that you fancy place it down into a room and then it goes to the ottoman category find any one that again you fancy that, that you like the look of and then basically just merge it into the chest of drawers and basically you've got a changing table. I, I always do this whenever it comes around to toddlers rooms because I like realism in my game and realistically like a two year old is going to have a changing table and so yeah it's just something that I always seem to do in toddlers room but as well above like the little changing diaper station if that's what you class it as I don't know why I called it that but you get my drift basically above that I wanted it to make it look like there was some um, kids clothes like hanging down kind of like a little bit of a wardrobe and so I use a shelf which is from the cats and dogs expansion pack place it onto the wall and then I found you know the dream home decorated game pack you know how you can like make your own wardrobes the, the shelves that like clothes clip to, basically I don't like the look of them. And so you might have seen, I sized them down really small. So then the clothes when they're hanging on the shelves, they stay the same size. But the actual quite modern shelf that they're meant to clip to, it sizes down really small. I then merged it into the shelf that I placed down from Cats and Dogs. And it kind of looks like a little, a little wardrobe area for the toddler's clothes to be hanging up. But then also in the toddler's room as well, I think I ended up placing down like a toy box and then like a, a potty. And then, yeah, that was pretty much it for the toddler's room. But you can see that I've already just skimmed past the kids' room of the house and then also just quickly done at the parents' bedroom. But in the kids' bedroom, I never do, right, side subject, I never do kids' rooms that have a double bed. And I was as I was building it, I was like, this could be a really great room for a teenager because it's got like enough space for a double bed. But then I was like, well, why don't I just make it so a kid can have a double bed? And then I liked the idea for the sims that are going to be living in this house my save file. Don't really have too much of an in-depth backstory for them, if any backstory for them, to be honest with you. The only thing that I was thinking of in terms of the backstory was there was going to be a set of parents, a teenager, and then a toddler and a child. And I was thinking that the teenager was quite popular and also quite protective over their siblings. And so that's literally as far as I got. I don't know why, I just didn't re the, the idea wasn't flying this week in terms of storyline so if you've got any ideas please feel free to let me know but on top of that like the idea of the teenager being quite protective and also quite a, a popular teenager in the world of Tartosa I was thinking that maybe there was another sibling so there was like a, a fourth sibling that was a little bit older and maybe potentially moved out and so maybe the kid moved into like their siblings room and they used to have a double bed and then they kept the bed I like that idea I feel like that's quite realistic and so so maybe, maybe I'm just going to go with that. But yeah, in terms of storyline, I, the idea was not flying this week. I just couldn't think of any storyline for Sims that could live in this house. This was more so a case of saw this picture of a beautiful like vineyard in Italy on Pinterest, fed enough of it, wanting to recreate it. Originally, I thought it was going to be a wedding venue. So that probably didn't help the storyline process because originally Sims from all different walks of life were going to be coming in and out the doors of this place. But yeah, so if you've got any ideas for a storyline, for sims that could live in this in this house feel free to let me know i like the idea of maybe maybe this family like owns a restaurant or something and that's why they've got a wine cellar in the downstairs basement area you know it used to be a, a vineyard and now it's just kind of like their house with a vineyard 
or like a cellar thing maybe they own a restaurant and they've got lots of bottles of wine or something but as you can see i just finished up the teenager's bedroom the teenager's bedroom is actually on the highest level of the house technically speaking it is on the fourth level because i've now moved on into kind of like the the cellar basement area technically this is the first level the level that's got the kitchen is the second the level that's got like the parents bedroom the kids bedroom the toddler's bedroom is a third and then yeah the toddlers no the to not the toddlers the teenagers bedroom is technically on the fourth level they've got their own little staircase leading up to their bedroom in the bedroom itself i end up placing down a bed which is from the jungle adventure game pack and then there is also like a bookcase like a little tv across from the bed there's also like a nice computer desk area with like one of them curved monitors the one that i use is from the high school years expansion pack but now as you can see and as as I just kind of like briefly mentioned I've now moved on into the basement slash cellar not really sure what to term it as because it is also the garage space as well which I did decide to cut out the footage of me decorating the garage only because it was the video is already long enough you're gonna see screenshots of it and if I'm being completely honest inside the garage which is on the same level as this by the way but it ends up having like shelving units spare tires I end up placing down like a car in there and then in terms of gameplay the only one object that your sims can Actually interact with is the woodworking table and so I thought just to save like three minutes I'm just going to cut out that footage of me doing the garage but yeah like I mentioned there will be screenshots of it at the end of the video but currently I'm just going around and just trying to make this feel like a wine cellar. One thing that massively helped this was from the dine out game pack we've got this like wine cellar decoration absolutely perfect absolutely no brainer when it came around to doing the cellar space and so basically what I did is I planted some into the walls and then I used some archways some from the Sims 4 base game and then at some from I think from the jungle adventure game pack and I basically merged them in tried to make it then look a little bit more built in I then also found these barrels which the ones that I've used are from I believe the wedding stories game pack and then that was pretty much as wine celery as I could make it but apart from that I'm just going to go around now finish it off with adding some final touches and that is pretty much it so anyway guys, I'm going to end this voiceover right here. As always, you can download this build via the gallery. My gallery ID is JessicaPyYT or you can just search for the hashtag JessicaPyYT or just the hashtag JessicaPy. As always, thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, if you do like my content, then please do subscribe. And hopefully I will see you in my next Sims 4 speedboarding video. Bye guys.